talking about the customer service application. So first, I want to spend some time talking about the most important thing in the creation of any web application, and this is uh, creation of the proper database schema. And after that, uh, we'll talk about what is actually customer service application and how to build it using Iron Spin Designer. Uh, of course, the application we will be uh, building today, in fact, uh, we will be building two applications, uh, will not be uh, something which you purchase out of the shelf. It, you shouldn't expect that you get uh, in the 15 minutes which was spent on the uh, actually creating application, you will get absolutely uh, retail version of polished um, commercial application. Uh, but uh, I think we'll have a kind of clear idea how to proceed and what you can achieve uh, with within a uh, small amount of time. So let's start with the uh, database. Iron Speed Designer is a tool which allows you to generate completely uh, web application based just on database schema. Effectively, uh, it uh, can create the whole application with the, all the pages uh, and the data entry forms and reports and everything. Um, just by pointing to the schema. But to have this application properly designed and um, uh, to have it useful, first of all, this schema should be proper. Because Aerospace Designer uh, uses this uh, uh, all the schema information, all possible information can retrieve from schema to create pages. And the uh, layout of those pages, functionality of those pages, uh, is, are actually driven uh, by the schema. Also, you should not uh, forget that uh, performance is a very important part of your application, or any application, in fact. And the performance of the application also depends on schema. If the schema is not properly designed, uh, your pages could be very sluggish, and uh, uh, that would give a wrong impression to uh, the users of this application. So properly designed schema uh, is a very important thing. Also, it allows you to uh, have your application to be extensible so that you can uh, extend it later on and add new functionality if you need. And um, as we always say, uh, you don't need to know uh, the code, ISPX or VB or uh, any uh, particular .NET concept to create an uh, application using Iron Speed Designer. But you do need to understand uh, how the database schema is created, what are foreign keys and so on. So, Basic information about schema design is actually needed uh, because, again, if uh, you create schema properly, uh, you will get a uh, good, fast, extensible, uh, and properly designed application. However, if your schema uh, is not designed properly, most likely your application um, uh, won't be exactly the one you want to see. <coughs> so first and foremost, you have to normalize your schema. I don't want to go into details of the first or second or the third um, normal forms and definitions of those. Um, let's just kind of give it a, a, the common idea of what a normalization is. Effectively, normalization means that you don't have repeating information in any table. Uh, meaning, for example, if uh, on this screenshot is a pretty standard uh, example from the uh, kind of de facto standard database supplied by Microsoft. Uh, it's south wind or north wind, doesn't matter. And um, you can see the orders table, for example, right? So technically, you can imagine that each order uh, would have a shipper in it, and the shipper is just a name and a phone number, nothing else. Uh, there's not much information about shipper you need to know in the order, maybe. So we can imagine that in this order, each order has a shipper name. Um, it could be Federal Express, for example. You don't forget about even about phone. But then uh, you, can, you can see that this um, uh, information, like shipper name and the phone, or the same thing you can say about uh, the product, for example, or about a customer, uh, customer name and customer contact address, this information would be repeated in the multiple orders. So if, for example, customer A plays 25 orders, 25 times you will have repeated information about the company name, contact name, and so on. This is uh, not good for several reasons. And uh, one of the reasons, for example, uh, that if you need to change information of a particular customer, you need to change in 25 places, and uh, this is uh, prone to the error. <coughs> Secondly, uh, this uh, increase the volume of information of the particular table by that decreasing the performance of this certain table. 
much better to have all this repeated information, meaning the uh, address of the customer name or the same thing about shippers or anything else, to put in a separate table and have just a foreign key pointing to this table in your orders. Then if your customer placed uh, 25 or 100 orders and then suddenly he changes uh, the phone, you change it at only one table, customer's table, uh, without touching the orders table. So not repeating information in any table is a key uh, to have this information reliable and to make it faster. Also, uh, as less information you have in a certain table, as less fields you have in a certain table, as faster this table will be and faster will be search in this table. So <coughs> that's kind of the thing you want to achieve. In fact, uh, you can think about uh, normalization is uh, in a somehow creation of the star schema where you have index tables and detail tables. So index tables um, have just the keys pointing to detail table and all the actual information stored in the detail tables. And uh, such design has multiple advantages and we will look through those advantages uh, right now. Uh, first of all, if you have <coughs> one to many relationship, meaning again that you have uh, one uh, parent, um, let's say customer, and multiple objects like orders, or one order and multiple lines in this order for different products, uh, this relationship we can call as a child parent or master detail, uh, and um, putting this information in the different tables uh, gives a kind of flexibility and advantage in the design. Um, I'm a speed designer when it sees that uh, there are tables uh, which have a master detail relationship between them um, established by the foreign keys, it automatically will create uh, layouts where you will see uh, that uh, there are masters and the detail tables below or it could be uh, different layouts you can put it inside etc. But the important thing is that uh, you can see all relevant information uh, for the one master and you can sort it, uh, you can easily maintain it and uh, uh, it actually will be faster because if it's in different tabs, uh, not necessarily you need to load all the information at once. So you kind of achieve several goals, uh, accessibility, nice layout, and, and the speed. Also, important uh, thing which also, um, people, people often forget are layout, or well, not, sorry, not layout, lookup tables. Uh, what is lookup table? Well, sometimes uh, the information is not actually excessive. For example, imagine again shipper. Imagine that I don't have phone for this shipper. Imagine that I just have for company name, nothing else. So what kind of advantage would I get if I would have separate table where I would have, uh, for example, I have maybe five shippers only, Federal Express, UPS, USPS, I don't know, DHL and something else, uh, Airborne, uh, whatever, I don't know. Uh, what if I have only five of them? What sense to put them in a separate table instead of just putting this name right in this order's table? It's the same amount of information. What matters does it, uh, What difference does it make to put just a foreign key, which is one field, or put a name, which is exactly one field? So there's no uh, really any gain uh, in terms of uh, space or number of fields. Uh, and anyway, I would need to put this foreign key so this is the only field will be repeated. So why would I put them in separate lookup table? Uh, very simple. Uh, if you do that, then Iron Speed Designer will recognize that uh, this is a foreign key which is points to the, another table. So when it generates the uh, entry forms, which such as uh, edit tables or records or add records, pages, in this case, instead of um, giving you just um, a text box, it will give you drop down list with all the possible selections. So you don't need to remember the spelling of this Federal Express because otherwise uh, you enter 200 orders and you will have Federal Express starting with the capital, with the small, etc. FedEx, etc. Uh, the uh, simple example is countries. Again, it's always uh, very useful to have country table or uh, U.S. states table separately as a lookup table. Then your drop-down list doesn't give you room for mistake, doesn't give you room for error. You will select the state and the state always will be the same and you of course can configure and RSP designer will actually do it automatically for you uh, to show this particular field not as a number which is maybe foreign key or good but as a, a real name so effectively your presentation will be the same but that entry would be much much easier and what if uh, at some point uh, Federal Express decides uh, to change their name like Radio Shack now calls the Shack maybe Federal Express will 
officially called FedEx, then you will go to lookup table and change it once rather than in the thousands of orders. So lookup tables uh, is this very uh, smart idea, although it won't give you uh, any performance gains, but um, it will eliminate room for the error. So our suggestion for any information which is being repeated always have either detailed tables or lookup tables. And uh, uh, in the um, index table, effectively have all the indexes. Now, uh, this is kind of the whole idea of normalization. So do not put repeated information in one table and try to limit the number of fields uh, in one table uh, and put it in detailed tables. Of course, uh, there's uh, all these uh, exceptions from any rule, and sometimes uh, it's easier um, to put a string rather than a foreign key, and it could happen. But the general idea is that uh, you don't want to have tables with the hundred fields in it, uh, which contains repeated information, because that's first prone to error, and second uh, will uh, decrease your performance. And third, it will not give designer ability to help you create uh, nice design for the end data entry. Now indexing. Uh, general rule of thumb is to index uh, all the foreign keys, primary keys, and any fields you would search or filter your data by. Uh, indexing uh, will make all this filtering and the searching uh, much, much faster. Um, these days, the space on the hard drive uh, is basically not a limitation anymore. So the size of index tables uh, is effectively uh, do not matter much. But the speed gain, especially when you index uh, your index tables uh, by all the foreign keys, is are huge, and it could be like uh, ten times uh, gains in the performance. So our suggestions always, always, always index them. There is one exe exception, though, uh, and this exception uh, which you need to remember. Uh, and the exception is that indexing uh, helps a lot um, uh, with the performance of the tables when you search for the information. But when you enter a new row, it's actually decreased the performance. Because effectively, when you enter a new record in the index uh, table, uh, you need to update not just the table itself, but the uh, index file as well. Um, so if a certain table is uh, almost never being searched, or very rarely occasionally searched, but always uh, enter uh, data, but data always entered in the table all the time, then your actually solution would be the other way around. Rather than indexing it, you might not have it indexed at all, because uh, you are only care about data entry, not, uh, uh, for example, reading data. Uh, most of the time, 99% of the time, this is not the case, because most of the time, uh, data entry is just single record, and uh, uh, reading reports is all that you do. So. In this case, you have to index all the keys and all the search fields, etc. But for example, imagine that uh, your application maybe have kind of buffer table where the records are created for the, the only purpose of being, for example, email. So maybe your design of your application is such that uh, in different places you can create uh, effectively emails, and then you all enter them in some buffer table, and you have completely uh, separate uh, process which goes to the tables and just emails. Well, in this case, you never search this table. There's no sense to index this table, although there could be foreign keys pointed, but you never search it. All you do is to enter a record in the table, and then your special uh, program just gets top 100, mails them, deletes, get together the top 100, mails, deletes. So no searching, no sorting, no filtering. In this case, you avoid indexing, but it's a very rare exception. Most of the time, you want to index tables. Naming conventions. Again, important matter. Iron Speed Designer is not uh, some kind of wizard or magician. Uh, it actually uses information from the database, from your schema, to uh, create all the layouts, all the labels in the layout. And the uh, uh, name of the pages, uh, name of the labels, uh, all these type of things are, of course, originated in your database schema. So if you use meaningful names, then you will get meaningful labels and meaningful page names. Uh, use camel case. Uh, Iron Speed Designer is able actually to pass the names using uh, the camel case based on the capitalization of the certain letters and convert them to the human readable labels. For example, if you have username where U and N are capital, uh, Iron Speed Designer will understand that this is user space name. So your label would be 
um, uh, automatically generated. Of course, you can change any label, but if, what if you generated uh, thousand pages? Uh, changing all the labels in all thousand pages is pretty hideous job. It's uh, easy to do. It's just a couple of clicks, but a couple of clicks times uh, hundred times ten labels. You know, this is a lot of clicks. So, giving proper names from beginning is uh, a very big advantage. And in fact, uh, right now when we will come to the application itself, I will give a couple of examples when those names are, were not given properly in the beginning because uh, the schema was converted from some existing uh, schema uh, for the sake of uh, saving time. And uh, some of the names are unfortunately is not exactly as I wanted them to be if I would create the schema from scratch. Now, uh, if you have binary fields, it's uh, very and those binary fields are designed to, you know, uh, hold the information which you can upload from, for example, files, will be word files or images or anything else, you usually want to have another text field which we call companion or companion field. And um, this field is um, uh, designed to keep the name of the file you uploaded because, of course, your content is in the binary field, but what was the name? How do you show this uh, field? Well, that's where companion field comes to the picture. Um, the name of the field, of the companion field, is actually also important. Uh, we have a special file called configurationoptions.xsl. You can find uh, this file in the um, root of designer. And uh, you can easily find uh, uh, which names designer will treat as a companion name. Well, there are normal, normal rules. For example, if your uh, binary field is article, and then you have a field article path or article name, designer will recognize that, oh, OK, that's, that's the companion field for the article. Uh, if you have field picture, and you have picture name, and sa same thing. So uh, just a simple naming conventions you can see in the file uh, allows. You can, of course, you can edit this file and add your own conventions. Uh, finally, singular and plural. Well, uh, again, giving the proper name to the table uh, will uh, give you better name for the pictures and menus. For example, if my table called cat categories, plural, then my, I will have categories table. Instead of category table, which may be not, uh, it's not that it's bad, but it may be not ideal because, well, there are a lot of categories in this table. Now, another important thing, field data types. If you use proper, correct data types, it will help Ironspeed Designer to generate proper controls. For example, you can use a binary field to store images, of course. However, if you instead will use image type, then ISP designer will know this is image. So it will show this image on the show tables. It, you can, of course, show all the thumbnails. You can restrict the size of the image. But the important thing is that uh, designer needs to know what it is. If it, if it looks at this, oh, this is an image type, so let's show the images. Let's make a, um, a JAX pop up to show this image. Uh, so uh, if, for example, you uh, have a string field which can hold only the first name, and you know the first name can be more, let's say, 20 symbols or whatever it is, uh, then limit it uh, to nvar car 20 instead of uh, giving it n text, because then designer will know that it is a short field, uh, that you don't need to render it as the multi-line editor, for example. Uh, you need to place it, uh, combine it with other short fields, because layout is also automatically generated. I ask the designers look at your type, your type of your data and says, OK, this is a big and text field, meaning that it looks like there should be a lot of text, so put it below. And there are small fields that combine them together, so your layout will look nice. So uh, giving proper types are uh, very important, and again, it helps to get your proper layouts and uh, have proper validation, like, for example, with the money. If you give it a type of money, it would be shown as a currency rather than decimal. So pay attention to that etap. Now, Often, uh, you need to have a pretty complex uh, queries to show your data. Well, create database views for that. And uh, database views will uh, help you to show multi-table joints. Uh, will show you the complex queries, like nested queries, and so on. Uh, you can use, um, of course, Enterprise Manager or a similar tool. And the designer will treat actually views exactly like a database, so it will create the same tables and same functionality. Of course, if a view does not have a primary key, which is normal situation, uh, it will not create, for example, editable page. However, however, you can always 
go and define those primary keys in your uh, database or your designer. So if you create a view, for the view, you can go and define virtual primary key uh, or virtual foreign key in designer. Uh, this is the slide with the virtual um, foreign keys, but virtual primary key effectively defined similar way. And if you define a virtual primary key for the view, your designer will automatically generate uh, the editable pages, uh, the show particular record page and uh, ad page, all these type of things. So uh, our recommendation is always uh, define virtual foreign keys and virtual primary keys in the views. However, of course, you have to remember that when you are defining virtual primary key in the view, this really have to be a primary key. It should be unique. You cannot just define any field like quantity as a primary key. It will not generate properly. It will not re uh, request records from database properly. They will be kind of, we have uh, a lot of support cases when uh, people just define the first few as a virtual primary key without even thinking about it. And it's a very powerful tool, by the way. And uh, then they say, oh, OK, I've got now five duplicated records. Why just so? Well, because your primary key is not unique. You get five records with this key. That's why you get five records. So there is always a way to define virtual primary key, because views effectively are almost always have underlying tables inside. It could be more than one table. Uh, but each table has primary key. So if I have a view based on the three different tables, so my primary key obviously will be composed key combined from primary keys of all underlying tables. And this is kind of a uh, pretty easy concept to understand, and it's pretty powerful tool uh, to use. Now, the foreign keys. Define foreign keys. Always define foreign keys, because they are used to create master detail pages. The, uh, every design view page can be master detail page, and it's very convenient when you have um, them placed on the same table, a record and the, uh, and the detail table. It could be more than one child, of course, or more than one detail, uh, and uh, they, could, they will be automatically placed in the top container in this case, so uh, uh, that's a very convenient layout. Uh, also, having a foreign key, a designer will automatically uh, create so-called DFTA, displays foreign key as. It will look on your parent table. It will find out uh, what the type of your key. Most likely, it's uh, either uh, integer or GUID most of the time. Or so it will say, "Aha! This is not something which uh, user would like to see. Instead, let's see if there are text fields uh, over here. And if it finds text fields, uh, it has some logic to figure out which text field it will take. Uh, if it will be uh, filled with the word name in it, if it will take it, or if it's not, then it will just see the first text field, which is not mText. So most likely it will be the last name or first name. Of course, you can change this yourself, but 99% of the time, believe me, believe it or not, uh, it's actually correct out of the box. So you will see last name instead of uh, the ID. So foreign keys uh, give you this all this functionality out of the box. You don't need to uh, do anything for that. Uh, Examples of the foreign key relationship is uh, any tables, any index detail table relationship, effectively. Again, if you cannot do it on database, you can create virtual foreign key uh, in designer, as I already uh, mentioned, uh, mentioned right here on this slide, when I was talking about virtual primary key. And uh, with virtual foreign keys, you are much more flexible. Uh, again, you need to make sure that uh, effectively, if you say that this field in one table A uh, is a virtual foreign key pointing to table B, you need to make sure that for any value in the table A, there will be a record in table B. Otherwise, you will get problems uh, with retrieval of data. Uh, now, this was the uh, short introduction. It actually could be much. could take, uh, talk much more about the schema design. And in fact, we have a webinar specifically uh, devoted just to the schema design. But it was a short introduction uh, before going to the, our major uh, topic, which is a customer service application. So what is the customer service application? Uh, this is actually the same thing as, a, as in fact, the help desk application. And if you look, um, look up any search engine like Google or Yahoo or whatever it is, Bing, whatever you use, uh, and search for the customer service application, uh, and you will see a lot of uh, companies who offer those products off the shelf. And usually they name it both. Customer service and help desk and sometimes change, uh, use those names interchangeably. So the idea of uh, help desk or customer service application is that uh, you have to give your customers uh, ability to get help from your employees. 
meaning that they can open uh, support cases or help cases, or whatever you name um, those type of things, or tickets. So different companies uh, give different names uh, to these things. But effectively, you open some kind of case, and you can append this case. You can look up history of your cases, uh, and you can get a response to this case from uh, from the uh, customer representative. Of course, uh, there are certain functionalities that should be included, but basically that's almost it. An additional thing you also want to uh, be able to look up your account, maybe. <coughs> so uh, the second part of it is the uh, application-facing company, not the customer. So the sales representative or uh, technical support representative or employee, whatever you name uh, this uh, role in the company, should be able to see those cases and to append them to open close those cases, um, ch so change the status, and um, also maybe look up the account of the user. So actually, this is a combination of two applications. One of them faces customers, another one faces company. And in fact, not necessarily should be the same application. In real life, it's actually much better uh, if there are two different applications. Uh, because if they are different, you can set up security separately based on different tables. Because of course, your customers this is one table, and uh, your um, uh, employees or self-representative uh, uh, information is a different table. So uh, you might have different security with different access, different rights, and so on. So uh, you're better off creating two different applications facing the same database, I mean, based on the same database. Uh, the company-facing portion uh, of the customer service application, uh, most of the time, is the portion of the uh, bigger one, which is called CRM customer relationship module. Uh, CRM has not just this uh, customer service part. It has more than this. Uh, it has also uh, the marketing portion. It has uh, the sales and products, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's much bigger stuff. But most of the time, customer service application is, is the portion of the CRM. And in my example, effectively, what I did is I cut this portion from the existing CRM application, which I created for another webinar. So uh, we can look on them both uh, and see uh, what it is. Now, in more detail, uh, the customer service application which facing a company, what you have to have there? Well, you need to be able to manage support cases. You might need to uh, maintain knowledge base so that, uh, or FAQ, so that uh, your customers don't necessarily need to open a support case. Uh, they might just be able to look up the answer right in this uh, knowledge base. So you need to be able to maintain, of course, uh, this. And uh, you might want to maintain customer accounts. Again, usually uh, this is a portion of the CRM, but if you don't have CRM uh, or you have CRM and completely different software, which for some reason missing this part, uh, you would need to be able somehow look up accounts or manage uh, customer accounts. Uh, and again, the customer service application facing customers, you need to create new cases, update those support cases, uh, huge knowledge base, of course, not updated, uh, and uh, update your account, possibly, but not uh, somebody else's, of course. Now, uh, let's uh, look on the building elements uh, of this application. So, first of all, of course, database schema. You need to put uh, all the necessary tables in it, and in a second, I will go to the schema and see what kind of elements we want to have, and have it normalized as we spoke. Now, uh, aside of this, uh, you would most likely want to enable security for the both applications meaning that customer, before updating a case, have to log in uh, and have to have account before uh, he creates this, um, uh, this, this, this case. Uh, and uh, uh, employee, of course, uh, have to log in as well. And based on the uh, logged in name, you might uh, most likely want to have audit implemented so that uh, application will automatically store information about who created or updated uh, the particular case, and, and then it would be much easier to see the uh, kind of the flow of the case and the who uh, was the employee who answered this or that. Uh, of course, you would need to have a, a different menus uh, in both cases, uh, which will give you easy access to the pages you need and will not give you easy access to the pages which you almost never need, uh, because uh, you see, uh, if you have uh, every each and every page accessible to the top level menu, your menu becomes huge. And uh, uh, your application is um, uh, becomes really renders itself not useful, uh, not usable. Now, the first thing, as I said, uh, you need to create a database schema. So, what tables uh, you expect uh, to see in the uh, customer service application? And again, 
the same scheme is used by both customer facing and company facing applications so the both ends so first of course there is the case and case history tables and again this is master detail uh, you have a master record case and then case history uh, is the detailed table which reference to this case uh, but it could have multiple records because when you update the case you effectively create a new record uh, you need to create a bunch of lookup tables, uh, such as status, priority, type, and maybe specific to your business. Uh, for example, if you're selling software, you might have lookup tables for uh, .NET framework, uh, programming language, this type of things. Uh, you might want to have separate table for attachments uh, with the companion fields again. Uh, oh, there's a misprint in the companion word, so uh, I, will, I will fix it. My, my, my bad. Uh, uh, and, um, uh, this attachment table will be used in the, in the case history because very often you need to attach some kind of image or file. You would need to maintain table for the knowledge base. Uh, you of course have a table uh, for customers and representatives and you might want uh, more and more but this is kind of the basics uh, uh, which you want. Now the customer support effectively uh, what is it? Uh, this is uh, the thing which you need to be able to accomplish. Uh, you need to have customer account management, so you need to have pages which uh, give you ability to uh, create a new update existing pages, uh, maybe split merge accounts possibly. Uh, and you might need to uh, have the ability to uh, kind of manage some documents like uh, cases or, or nodes. Uh, you, could, you could have technically both nodes and cases, or you have just the cases and uh, you have internal nodes, um, uh, something like this. Now, building a help desk or customer service application with ISP designer, again, uh, those two terms, help desk application and customer service application, are effectively interchangeable because they refer to the same, uh, the same type of software. Uh, so where the ISP designer stands in this picture? Well, uh, it uh, actually allows you to do that uh, very fast, much faster, and uh, um, to some extent, uh, I would say that uh, the amount of time you would usually need to spend uh, to find out how the new purchased out-of-the-shelf application works and how to achieve different things and then how to change preferences and then how to slightly modify menus and layout. So amount of time invested in that is approximately the same amount of time you would need to invest to create this application using Iron Speed Designer from scratch. The advantage of creation of it from scratch is that it would be absolutely 100% extendable and flexible because uh, you will effectively create exactly what you want and when you find out that something is missing, you just go back, open designer, power it up and add whatever you need. So how do you do it? First, you select all the tables and uh, create all the pages. And it will automatically, BAMS creates all the pages with the uh, reports with the data entry forms with everything all the master detail relationship menus or everything is done then you go uh, to security wizard and add security and effectively application is almost done but but one thing is missing which what is missing effectively all the pages are there no kidding uh, everything you needed is there but usability is not there why it is so because it's too much you've got too many pages you've got too many uh, menus um, you looking at the dozens and dozens of pages and don't understand to where, what I'm, what should I do with all of this. So effectively, your work is started at that point, and the work is to delete unnecessary pages rather than create them. If they are there, you deleting and cleaning the interface. So you uh, decide uh, what page by default uh, sales representative or and customer need to land on when they sign in. It will be your default page, so you define the default page, and then from there you look at the application and see, okay, from here, if I uh, my default page is um, uh, cases, maybe, where do I go from there? Uh, maybe I need to go to knowledge base. So okay, I need menu for knowledge base. Do I need menu for specific separate menu to change priority? No, I don't. If a customer cannot add new priorities, it's only for the business representative. Do I need menu to change, for example? Uh, specifically to attachment table. No, because my attachments should be attached to the case. That's where I should see them. So you effectively deleting information, extra information, which is duplicated uh, from your menus uh, so that you don't um, don't see those um, uh, links which are not used and not useful. You can kind of need to think 
through, after you have everything in your hands, all the pages, all the functionality, but you need to think through the logic how you want, how you see it used. So you see, oh, I want cases, and then on the case I want, I want to see all the history. But when I want to see the particular record in the history, then I would like to see my attachments. Because why would I see all my attachments uh, kind of without the context of the particular case where it was attached? So, oh, okay, so that's the only way, so I need to delete all other menus, etc., and so on. And then after that, of course, you uh, might want to add some formulas and charts and, uh, and, and uh, some kind of dashboard capabilities. So maybe you want to see, be able, for representative, to see how many cases is opened, some type of uh, simple statistics, uh, and so on. Uh, with that, uh, let's go to the live designer application. And uh, uh, let me see which one. It's, uh, I need to run the proper one. This would be the guide. So uh, I have two applications created. Uh, one of them I called uh, CSComp, which stands for uh, Customer Service Company. And then one I called CSCut, which stands for Customer Service Customer. So company, obviously, is the application which uh, faces the company. And uh, uh, this application I almost um, uh, created to the end. And of course, there is a huge room for improvement because, as I said, this is a rather model other than end thing. Uh, and believe it or not, on this particular application, I spent, uh, I would say, about uh, four hours uh, to clean it up, etc. So now when I power it up, let me power it up on, in the browser so that we'll see it, uh, how it looks like in real life if we uh, browse it and see uh, what is there. And then from there, we'll uh, look for the simple functionality. Uh, and. Um, um, Hopefully to power up. Actually, I, I was created it last night, and hopefully I didn't mess up last time. You, by the way, we need to expect uh, some yellow screens or some other type of these things because it always happens. Okay, I need to log in, and I have. Uh, I don't have much data in this database. I, again, this was completely new schema, so I just put there uh, some simple thing. I can. So I logged in with my name. Uh, this is only one of two users I have here. So now, what do I see here? The first thing I, I see I see table of cases. This, I don't have cases. I, you see, I have opened only four cases, and they're opened by two customers. One customer is Creole Beatif. I have two roles I'm right here. You know, I'm a employee and the customer at the same time. Another one is Lance Armstrong, apparently our customer. We see that he opened some cases. And he, uh, uh, the subject of the case is, uh, what up is the bike? Well, of course, what else Lance Armstrong could ask for us? Um, so something uh, wrong with his bike. So this is a port case. So now, uh, I can see the history of the case. There's no history. He just opened the case, but he didn't append anything. Um, strange, but possible. Uh, I have another case from again from Lens. Again, this case already has a history. So he uh, opened the case, says unrecognized card charge, and says, I saw unrecognized uh, credit card charge in my account. So um, kind of I see these guys. I can go to the particular case with the history, and I can go to the particular history and uh, see this particular case. It doesn't have any attachments over here. Uh, but for example, another case I have here I created, I think, uh, one of test cases. I don't remember which one exactly. I think this guy. Ah, here the, I see the attachments over here. So again, there was history of the case created on the same day. Um, so it was uh, yeah, effectively yesterday. But this guy has an attachment. I can look at the attachments themselves. So for example, if I click on it, I will see the picture, and my attachments are pictures. And uh, I can see another picture is also attachment. Or I can go to the particular history and see those attachments separately. Now, here, I can delete or edit them if I want. So this is kind of uh, simple functionality to see the cases. Of course, in my real life, there will be thousands of cases, so they could be filtered. So I can, for example, filter all the cases only by the user and see only the cases related to this particular user. Uh, of, course I, of course, I can filter maybe the cases by the date open. In my case, unfortunately, ah, not actually no. You see, I have cases opened uh, in, in different dates. I typically create them separately. So uh, in real life, I might want to filter them to only by the cases which are open, uh, let's say, in November, right? Uh, because I have thousands and thousands of cases, and now I see only November cases. So of course, this, uh, I, and, I, and I might see filter cases by the uh, representative, I have two representatives apparently, uh, one of them Bill Gates, uh, another one is me. Uh, so I can see all the cases uh, for the Bill Gates as well. Um, so 
this is kind of simple functionality which allows you to filter cases, to see all the cases which you need to go through the pagination, to get the report of them, uh, report uh, those cases in the Excel uh, or uh, copy, etc. all the things. Now, second thing which of course I would need to do is I would need to uh, go and uh, look on my customers and maybe edit the customer record. So I have uh, three uh, companies, which of each of those companies has several customers inside. Uh, so uh, this is my these are my customers. Uh, this customer belongs to one company. There is another company. I have uh, two customers from the Acme company, Lance Armstrong and Field Beauty. Uh, this is information about them. I can uh, look up this specific information about Lance Armstrong. All the cases, of course, for him are touched over here. Uh, and I go from here to case itself if I need to. So it's all interconnected. Um, so that's kind of the simple functionality. And then I have a knowledge base. Uh, again, I, have, I can see all the knowledge base articles which I created, three of them, or I can create a new one. So that's how it looks like. Plus, uh, again, I have audit enabled in here. So, uh, for example, if I create a new customer right now, uh, who was my last customer? I would say it also will be the same company, and the name of this customer would be, well, we have Lance Armstrong, so uh, then uh, maybe uh, let's go and create uh, George Hincati, for example, Hincati, and his name is George, Big George, my favorite cyclist. Uh, I need to create a email, new email for him, uh, so I can just click here and create, well, ah, I didn't have this page created, I need to create this page, so this page is missing. Uh, so for now I'll select him in my email. Uh, again, I cut this application from the full CRM application, the full CRM, all these pages are there. So I kind of forgot about this guy, so uh, I would need to have this created as well. We can create it, of course, now, or uh, can do it later. The title is uh, Racer, I don't know, Cyclist, but uh, phone number, etc., etc. Uh, username uh, will be Joe or Chi, and uh, um, what else? I need password. Password, I also they make George, George. Notes, Big George, Big George. So now I created a new new user. You see, I've got new user, and uh, it has a password. And you see, automatically, it's recorded that it's created by me, and it's created right now because this is audio trail enabled. Now, if I go back to the application, uh, some pages I'm missing. As I said, for example, the new email I would need to add. In fact, um, uh, we can edit easily right now. So we will go here and say, OK, we forgot uh, the email table. So I would need to go and select my database. And my database name is CRM because, again, as I said, it's uh, using the same uh, uh, database, the same schema. And here I would say, oh, OK, my <coughs> emails are missing, so email table is here. What do I need? I don't need this type of tables. Uh, view email. Uh, well, effectively, I don't need this too. Uh, all I need is to effectively the only one thing is to uh, maybe edit and add, not nothing else. So it's just two tables. So what it will do is we'll create those two tables, but also we'll create menu for them. And uh, I don't want the menu for these tables as well, because they would be accessible directly from uh, the. Um, Applications. Last thing I need to do is uh, to hook it up uh, to my customer page uh, where we were. If you remember, it was the only place I needed it. Oh, it won't start because it's building right now. Hold on. It uh, will be troubles. It will ask me to sign in again because it's just built again. And while building, it changed the LL, so all the contexts are gone. And of course, I need to try and I need again. So the uh, thing where I needed to add, ah oh man, still building? No, oh, it's done. So now it should be good. Now it should be good. Okay. So I go to customer. So all I needed to add this button. So it's in the add customer button, right? So. Uh, Oops, wrong, wrong click. Uh, so what I need to go is to add customer and hook it up this particular link, email address, I link. So what do I do is then 
I will just say that my link goes to where? Goes to add merchant's email. So in fact, it's already there. So now, very likely, very likely, I can try to click it. Bingo. Now I can create email. So that's what it is. Take to care about that. So uh, that's uh, the application. So now let's look at the schema which was underlined of this application. I have a diagram for it. Now this is the portion of the schema uh, which we used. Again, this is the whole schema for the CRM application. And as I said, this is the portion of the CRM application. So this is the portion effectively right here, right in the center of the screen. So what do I have? I have a customer record. And I have uh, the self-representative record right here. Now both of them have a foreign keys in the case record for representative ID and account user ID pointing to uh, two different tables, to customer and to representative. So the name account user ID may be not ideal. It may be better to have customer ID. But again, as I said, uh, this table was converted from a uh, schema from other schema where instead of customer it was called account user. And um, uh, changing some old, some of the names are easy. Some of the names, uh, especially when you have data, is almost virtually impossible. So some of the field names are still uh, uh, from old one, and this is a good example uh, that having better names will help. And this name may be not ideal, but I, unfortunately I can't change it at this particular second. Nevertheless, I have a ca case uh, which uh, has foreign key point into representative and customers. Now, <coughs> I have table for problem history which points to the case, so each case can have multiple records in the problem history. I have case attachments table which points to the problem history, so then I can have multiple attachments in each uh, problem history record. Of course, I have a keys uh, pointing to index table, priority, case subject, and knowledge base, and case status. Ah, sorry, priority, case subject, and case status. I have separate table for the knowledge base, and I have customer role, again, another lookup table. You might not need it, it's just uh, for the sake of example of lookup table. One more table included in the application is actually web request. Uh, but again, this is a portion of marketing. So this here will be marketing. This is the merchant uh, email table, which uh, I forgot again the name was coming from some other schema. So uh, some of the names are maybe not ideal, although most of them are good. So this is actually the very simple schema for this very simple model uh, customer service application. Uh, so the audit which I just showed created is in the uh, database tab. Again, um, the thing is that we need to cover so much material uh, talking about it that in, in reality, uh, we have like five different webinars covering, covering each of them uh, in depth. So if you kind of uh, have unanswered questions and, and think, oh, he just mentioned that, but how do I do this? Um, uh, look at our scheduler, uh, database design, uh, audit trail, uh, the formulas, the dashboard, etc. All of them have a specific webinar. So the audit trail, which I mentioned, uh, for example, you can see that my my tables have those fields created by update, created on created by, created on, updated by, updated on. Those fields are configured to be updated automatically. They are initialized to the user ID, which is logged in user, uh, when created by, of course, when I insert the record, and updated by, uh, of course, when I change the record, update record. And the same thing uh, it goes for the uh, create on plus. These fields have a virtual foreign key pointing to representative record, so uh, I'm being shown right here at the cancel from here. I don't want to create I need another one. So you can see created by name. Uh, it shows VTF. It doesn't show uh, just, uh, you know, the uh, ID, the number, because we configured it to display as the last name right here. So this is just kind of a quick look at the uh, audit thing, which I said. The security is, of course, of course, configured for all the pages in here. In this case, is database security, and the table used for it is my representative table, which, because that's who is being logged in effectively, and has login name, password, and uh, ID uh, over here. Uh, now, let's go and uh, have a look at the customer facing portion, and the customer facing facing portion is effectively uh, almost not done at all. It has uh, half done, so I, I want to go through the quickly through the couple of things which you would need to add. So right now. When I power this thing up, what you will notice is that, first of all, uh, there is no security, maybe, or maybe uh, I don't actually remember if I enable security or not. 
Oh, no, it's enable security. It enable security for all the pages except the knowledge base, because technically you have to be able to look up knowledge base even without the login in. But any other page uh, will request. So knowledge base is available. Uh, you can look at any article. However, if I want to open a case or the show cases, I would be uh, required to log in. But let's log in with the Lance Armstrong. Name again is Lance. Lens, I believe I didn't. I don't think I changed it to something. So I could have uh, here two my cases, and I, I chose specifically for the uh, sake of example slightly different layout. Now I have a table with a detailed table below. So uh, when I select certain case, I have the problem history, and I can of course append uh, new cases over here, and I can say that this case <coughs> will be. Uh, belong to the case before, but you see this is not convenient. This is actually bad because yeah, sorry. Uh, this is actually bad because uh, they should know which case I'm appending, right? And uh, who is updated by, updated on. I, I shouldn't be able to select that, so I need to modify that. And that's what I said. I created this from scratch, so now let's go and modify certain pages. Uh, so it's add problem history page. So let's go to this uh, problem history at problem history page. So first of all, case ID. Case ID, of course, uh, should be passed from the uh, from the case, because I already have a case. So case ID should be initialized. What it is initialized to? Let's see. It's initialized default value. No, not uh, exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be able to initialize to my URL parameter. So I delete this. I would say initialize to environment URL, and that would be case ID. That will be my parameter. Now, do I want to be able to select the case I append? No, because I am pending a uh, problem here to this particular case. So the type of my control should be drop down list. This effectively should be the literal. Okay. Done. So now I have literal and I initialize it to uh, uh, case ID. Now I need to pass this case ID when I click on the add. And where do I click it? I click it on the case and I click it on the uh, my uh, where let me check which table I was coming from. Just which page? No table, of course. So this is a problem history table on the showcase table. So I would need to uh, go to the problem history, uh, problem history table on the showcase table. So this is a problem history table over here. And the button I'm clicking uh, to uh, add new problem history is effectively right here. Now, uh, if I look on the data source of this particular uh, uh, thing, uh, this particular panel, which is uh, problem history table control, right? If I look on the data source, I would see that I use case dot case ID from my table control panel. Well, uh, it's assigned to the problem history case ID. So when I create the new case ID. Where do I get this case ID? I would need to have a similar query. Here is a small trick over here. The thing is that this query is created automatically, but uh, the uh, case ID here is not present. So what I will do to have a trick, I would need to have a control of the case. So I would add case ID, and it doesn't hurt it because um, it's actually information which is kind of a bit useful. As a literal, right here, I have Representative ID, let me just add here a case ID. So I would insert a column to the left, and I will go to the tool box, go to the uh, fields, and I would say case ID field over here, and the label case ID label over here. Now I have case ID. After I got case ID, I can use it in my um, child. So on the problem history fields now, what I can do is that I can retrieve on my uh, new, where is my uh, edit button, copy button, row view button. Oh, it's not here. I need to uh, go to add. Sorry, one second. I need to go to the add button, of course. New button. Here, this button is actually 
right now redirects to add problem history. I need to pass a, the parameter over here. So let's do this pass this parameter over here. Edit. Let's pass the parameter, go to the URL and then add a new parameter. So the parameter name would be case ID and the data will come from where? It will come from the case table control row. And the, here I would select the field value. In fact, I can actually not necessarily I need to select a field value. I can actually select the primary key as well. So I can do uh, actually this because the primary key is case ID effectively. So uh, this uh, should be enough. So I don't even need to add this label. I might, but I might not. not. So let's build it. And hopefully right now, uh, if I didn't miss anything, uh, when we create a new record in the uh, problem history, so let's go here, let's refresh it. Of course, it will ask me to log in again. So let's do this. It will ask me to log in again. And when I click this guy, you see, I've got the case ID. The last thing I would need to do here, of course, this ID is really weird. I might not want to have this type of ID. Instead, I might want to have uh, some other information to show, so so-called DFK. So what what would I show here instead of case ID? And again, I don't need actually case ID over here. I thought I need, but I don't. It's just a good uh, example that you can see it. I might want maybe to see uh, the subject of the key. So let's do this quick modification. Uh, Again, I might not need this case ID because it uh, doesn't look nice and effectively I, I can fill this out. So let me just delete it back, remove the column. I don't need it here. And in my uh, add problem history, my case ID, of course, I should not be able to add new ID here. So I remove this link. It's up, uh, completely not needed. Uh, delete from here. Because uh, it should be, and here what I need to do is to change this thing as how it is shown. Uh, it's initialize uh, to this, uh, but do I want to show it? In fact, I might not even need to show it. Although if I do want, then what can I do? Is I can uh, I can technically retrieve uh, this uh, thing separately from as a column value. Uh, but in this case, uh, I can just leave it to this medium. Uh, or I can remove this thing. So I just was trying to show. So now uh, I will remove this guy to this kind of fields from here. Remove rows. And I, I'm done with this particular uh, table. And then I, I need to go to other tables and uh, uh, verify how other tables are working. For example, in the add case table uh, page. On the add case page, again, all those things are not done properly. And if I go to the F case, I would see, because I, I didn't modify it yet. Uh, it's still uh, kind of raw. I just created it. So you see, right here, I have a lot of things which I should not have. I should not be able to select the presentative. And so I don't need this field. Uh, I should not uh, be able to select user. It should be automatically set to me. Uh, the status better be initialized to open, and date open to today. So a bunch of things need to be done. So for example, representative. I don't want it. Okay, so I simply remove this thing. Uh, account user move here. Now I don't want it to be editable. It should be a label. So I will go and change this thing to a literal. Okay. Now it's literal. Now I need to initialize it uh, to the logged in user. So initialize when logged in to user ID. Actually, I'll better show you how to select it rather than typing. You right click functions environment and uh, not even security user ID. So that's, that's how it is. Now uh, case status better to be initialized to the open I. Honestly, don't remember what is open. 
Uh, let's see, for example, it's two. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Uh, now, they opened label, initialize this thing to now. Again, I can type it, or I can show you where to select daytime functions. Go daytime, you select now. Or I can type it, of course. Uh, now, close date, I shouldn't be able to do this because it cannot be closed at the moment. So I need to delete this thing. Delete this thing. Uh, now I want to actually move this thing up so that this all aligned and remove the SRO. Uh, case subject I would need to create. Well, that's kind of uh, almost done. So let's build this thing. So that's how I uh, kind of um, Initial, need to modify all the pages because from scratch designer doesn't know this type of things. This doesn't know that I want now as the uh, you know as the current information doesn't know that I want to initialize. I mean this type of logic is a business logic. It has to be added of course because designer knows layouts, it knows data, but it's oh sorry it's capital. But it has no clue about your business logic. So uh, that's what we do. That's all your job will be to add this business logic. Now you see automatically set to the user. Again, this is not nice uh, user, so uh, very likely I would need to change this. It's uh, today's date. It's open, I guess, correct. So now it's, it's good. The only thing I needed to do here is to have this to show uh, uh, not... So it's initialized the user ID, uh, but likely I, I want to show it is uh, as the uh, last name, for example, right? So how do I do this? Well, then I will do the following. I will switch it back to drop down list. And I will keep it still initialized to this, right? But I will display it as a last name. And I will disable it because I cannot change it. So I will say enabled false. So now i done with this page. Uh, problem history. We um, uh, just modified the problem history thing. Now I would need maybe to have uh, the customer uh, table, uh, customer page to so let me show this guy again. Uh, next thing I know, I, I see that here, uh, what I'm missing is my own customer record. I might want the, to modify something there, my, I don't know, my name or my last name or something else. So I would need this record as well. So right now, when I log in, this is visualized properly, it shows in this, um, my date, etc. So date, effectively, you see it automatically, the focus default, because it's the first field comes to the date field, and it pops up the calendar. So what I would do in this case, I wouldn't put it to the first one. So instead, I will uh, change it to something else. Uh, so what else we can put on top? For example, uh, we can to put on top, for example, the subject instead of date, right? Then, then it would be, oops, wrong one. Uh, subject instead of date. Let's just move it. Moving is very easy. You see, you just take them and just move. Now, that's final page. Now, as I said, I want to account page. The last thing I want to show today, we're already running after more than an hour, but again, it's a huge subject. Unfortunately, it's very difficult, almost impossible to squeeze it, uh, not even an hour, but in the two or three hours. But um, uh, anyway, uh, let's just see how quickly you can create a new page. Uh, as I said, we're, what we're missing is uh, my uh, uh, customer table. So what I want is to have the show customer table page and edit customer table page. So I will go to designer, application wizard, open application wizard to go to pages, right? Uh, select my database, it's um, called CRM1 database. Uh, now, what I need is to customer table. Which pages I wanted? I wanted pages which is show records right here. I don't need to see any tables because I wouldn't be allowed to see any other records rather than mine. So no tables. So we remove all the tables. I don't. Uh, I can of course have add records, but I don't want me to create new instance of myself. So this is only representative can create. So I have only edit and uh, show. That's only two records I need. So I click finish. Okay, done. Now menus. Uh, if I go to menus, uh, and I will see that I've got new menu for uh, the, uh, hold on, I need to build, I think. Okay, let's have a 
case, I want to not now add menu for the customer. So I would create insert new menu item. I would say my menu item would be account, because I don't want customer, I want account. Right? And the URL would be my show customer page. That would be my URL. Okay? So it will say account and show customer page. I don't need any other menus over here. I think that would be completely enough. Now, when I go to this page, on this page, uh, of course, I want to open my own record. So I need to modify my query. So here is my query, customer record control query, right? And I go to the query, and I say that it will uh, request query string customer. But I don't have any query string over here. What I have is my logged in name. So what I will do, I will remove this guy, I will add another way of course, and I will say that my customer, customer, my account user ID in my case equals to my logged in ID. So I go to security and user ID. Almost done. The only thing which is missing, so finish this, let's look at the fields. Uh, I don't have a company, okay, uh, first name, last name. Of course, I would need to rearrange them because uh, this should be uh, uh, together. Uh, so I would say, for example, password should be together with the uh, username, right? So I would say username goes here, username goes here, title goes up, title goes up, uh, now name yeah, for example, email may go down, email go down, last name move, and first name move. Now it's a bit better. Uh, of course, these type of things is impossible to do automatically. It's difficult. Now, do I want these things? No. I, I don't want to have any audit trail over here. This would be useful if the representative create new record, but not when I update it. So that, that's kind of uh, the whole thing I wanted, and I initialize it. So now when I build it, I will get my account record. So I would go to there and, oh, sorry, forgot the important thing. Of course, I can't go there until I log in, so I would need to secure this page as well. So I would see that my new edit customer and show customer, and uh, these two guys should be only signed in users, so I set security to these guys too. Now I finish it, builds, and uh, bingo, it's done. So now I go back to my application, and for example, I go to showcase. It will ask me to log in, of course, because it was just rebuilt, so I need to log in again. <laughs> and I still was lens over here. So now I have account page. I can go to my account. When I click on my account, I get my own record because uh, I logged in here. I can see it. I can see all my cases below. And if I want, I can edit it. Of course, I need to do some things. Again, this should be shown as the email address. Uh, how to do this? Extremely easy. You go here, you go to formulas, and you see it is showing, not the ID, of course, but it's showing. Um, Hold on. This is email address ID, and email address ID is pointing to. Oops, uh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, I, I needed to select first this thing. Uh, my bad. Yes, of course, it will happen because I needed to see complete selection. So let's go back to database, uh, email address ID, it is merchant emails. So I want to show it is merchant emails, email address ID. Uh, so that's, that's how I want it to be seen. So on my pages, email address ID should show as the default value, so let me delete it actually. and drag and drop it again. Oops, where's my, uh, I need to, 
hold on. Toolbox. So I would need to do this again and uh, put it here. Uh, I want this to show the default, so it will go there. Yeah, now it should be it should be okay, I believe. Uh, now uh, the uh, I secured it. So what else uh, did I need it to do? I don't remember what I wanted else. Uh, edit is working. I mean, so this is actually uh, the page I created. So uh, of course there are a bunch of other things I need to take care about. Uh, for example, if I go to showcase, in the showcase I can see that uh, uh, my problem history, uh, if I add a new problem history, no, so it's actually fine, we, we did it. This is modified, this is good, so this all, all good. Um, well, just need to go through different pages and see whatever is missing. Um, for now it looks like all fine. There's my cases. I can create new case, I believe. Yes, I can create new case. It selects me, uh, so it's all good. It sets the proper date, so this is all good. Yeah, it just looks like it's fine. Uh, no, it shows properly. I would need to, again, I just changed this, so I need to rebuild to show this, this thing properly. But more or less, um, this, is, this is actually a customer-facing application, and the whole functionality is here. Uh, so that's how you would approach these. There are a couple of uh, uh, tricks. Uh, which uh, you might might want to use. For example, if you want to add some kind of uh, drill downs and drill numbers, uh, you would need to pass the form or something like this with the important thing of the href, uh, which is effectively clickable, which goes to proper table. To audit, I just showed how to create audit. Uh, buttons with index tables instead of direct menu, that's what we just did. Uh, another thing you can do is the create first uh, pages for one table, actually not page, table, this print, uh, and then uh, adjust uh, the application generation options, meaning that, and this is kind of useful information, uh, you see we have here application generation options, uh, where you can select what uh, would be uh, created uh, specifically for the particular, uh, for the particular uh, page, meaning that uh, if I go here, I can say that for the new pages, for the, let's say, reports, uh, for the basic, I want uh, to include uh, this type of filters, this type of buttons, and so on. So um, to customize this to have, for example, less buttons, less filters, or maybe different set of row buttons. Instead of going to every page and deleting them, you can create one, look at it and say, oh, you know what, I don't want to have export to uh, Word, and I don't want to have this and that. Instead, I would have less buttons, so it won't be that uh, cluttered, maybe. So you just go here and select what you want to show and not what your default page size. So my suggestion is to create one page, make it look nice as you like it, and then uh, change options and then create everything else. So that will save you uh, time on, in deletion. <coughs> uh, if you want to have a child table, um, if you want to add this child uh, detail table to a record below, uh, then uh, what you might do uh, is uh, drop them first inside the record, then <coughs> it will become a child automatically. Then you cut it and paste in the tab controller. So that's the common the common thing you want to do. Uh, so this couple of tricks. And now uh, let's look at what kind of questions um, uh, do we have. OK. Uh, the questions from John. Can you have one application that connects two or more different databases? Yes, application can connect two or more different databases. And effectively, uh, to do this, uh, you don't need to pull any specific tricks. All you do is the following. You go to the Tools, Application Wizard, Database tab, and just click Add. And you, here you add another database, any type of it. The only limitation, though, uh, is that uh, the application can not have uh, tables with the same name linked. So, meaning that if I'm right now have the following tables linked, let me just collapse this thing. I have linked account company, case attachment, uh, case status, case subject, customer, customer role, knowledge base. This, these are not gray out tables which are linked. If I add another database, another tables, I am not allowed to have any table with exactly the same name. 
uh, because uh, these names are used into in the business classes naming and uh, in some other places. So having the same name uh, for two different tables uh, will uh, break the logic. So other than this, yes, you can have as many databases as you wish. Uh, could we show the schema of the attachment table? Attachment table schema is extremely simple. This. It has ID, it has file name, it has attachment, and it has a foreign key point into the problem history. That's it. That's it. Uh, so the, if you want to see the types, I can give you uh, standard, standard. So you will see that uh, make it bigger slightly. Hold on. So you have ID integer, uh, file name, and varchar 50 for the file name, attachment, var binary max, so any type of binary field, and uh, you can define as a foreign key. That's the whole schema. Uh, for the end, uh, what is the projected release date of your new version? Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, as uh, our um, chairman, Alan Fisher, uh, likes to say uh, that uh, we can release on time, uh, on budget, or on quality. Pick any two. So as of now, uh, and these, uh, it's, we cannot define exactly exact date. I cannot tell you. Right now, it's in the final uh, verification account, um, uh, quality assurance verification cycle. So as soon as quality assurance department will tell us uh, that uh, it is good to go, it will go. Uh, but when they will tell us, we cannot say. Can you email the entity relationship diagram? Um, what I will do, I will attach the script for the schema. And uh, uh, you can re recreate the schema in, the, uh, in your own database. And then you can do anything you need or want in the schema. Uh, how do you make the height and width of the rich text field larger or smaller? I have tried uh, to enter 400 for height and, uh, and that's back to default. Uh, this is a good question. So first of all, uh, it's uh, uh, editor specific. Now, if we're talking, for example, about this particular editor, this is a CK editor. So we can go here, and uh, you will see. Uh, so this uh, is show customer its nodes. Uh, let us see. <coughs> Here are the properties. Now, uh, let us go to some editable field. For example, the edit customer. Yes. Uh, this is edit customers. And uh, I go to editable field. It's notes. And there's a text box. And I believe this text box most likely is the, the secret editor. But we can set it specifically. So it is a secret now we definitely know. Now, you see there are the custom properties. If you go to the custom properties, uh, you could uh, hold on. Actually, scratch it, uh, what I said. And uh, editor height and width is just right here. So you can set it here uh, to be bigger or smaller. For example, if I put it 200 height and 500 width, you will immediately see that it I thought it may be a bit overkill. If I build it and go to this page, which is edit customer, you will immediately see that it becomes very wide, but extremely uh, short. So, length, length. Now let's go to edit. See, it becomes uh, short and high, but wide. Uh, so if I change the settings for this, it will change it. So if I do, uh, if I do other way around, 500 by 200, you will see immediately that, actually, I just made it 500 by, by 500. So I will just refresh the page, you will see it changes. So that's, that's, that's kind of easy thing. 
build, go here, refresh. In fact, I'm tired of typing this thing. Now you see it's become bigger. So that's how you change it. Can this uh, CSA link current live APR data tables and edit data when APR is running? If linked, will APR table locked? Uh, well, uh, you see that actually depends on your ERP. Uh, if it's designed normally, of course, it won't uh, link, uh, lock anything. And of course, you can do this because uh, the table is not being locked until uh, unless the millisecond when it actually writes it. Uh, each uh, database transaction is parameter as transaction boundary, so that it only locks the table in the moment when it writes read. Uh, other than that, it's not locked ever. So, of course, it can. Uh, but if your IRP somehow design that it locks, then it's a really bad design and it won't work, but I don't believe uh, you have such a bad design. So the answer is yes. Is ISP design a support for cross tab? I don't know what's cross tab. So can answer. Can add database like Microsoft Visual Fox Pro? No. Uh, databases which we support uh, are the Microsoft SQL Server, uh, the uh, MySQL, Access, uh, and Oracle. That's are four types of database support in this release. In the coming release, it will be a couple of more, but uh, there is no Fox Pro and no, no plans for the Fox Pro. Uh, when you make uh, custom changes in the, the uh, do you have lose changes uh, refreshing? You do not lose anything if you do it right. By doing right, I mean that if you want to make any changes in the Visual Studio, uh, you can change them only in the section one of the code. If you go to any page, and by the way, let me make a default back. Okay, good. Save. Now, if I uh, go to any code file over here, I will see that I have two sections. All this. Section one and section two. As long as your changes are limited only to the section one, they will be preserved. So you can change them, save, then open designer, open application, changes are there. I don't recommend effectively to uh, using them in parallel, meaning the change there and here, because then you rely on the detection of the changes made. So my suggestion, if you want to change something in Visual Studio, close the application designer, do those changes in section one, open and back it there. You can not change anything in the ASPX code. ASPX code is always completely generated. So if you want to change something in ASPX code, forget about Visual Studio, uh, go to the page and change it right there in the cell editor. In the cell editor right here, you can type anything, it will be inside this TD tag. Uh, but uh, other than this, it will be preserved. When will workflow pages be available? They are available. I just didn't create them because in this particular application I don't need them completely. But uh, they are available here, right here. So answer is now. How did you manage to do CRM with three models, the sales marketing service in one database, in one application, and uh, redirect based on the user role for each sub-model or three applications? Well, uh, the CRM application is effectively one application. Uh, this is much easier way to do it, uh, but I can do it as a three applications as well. I can do it as a five application. In five, in fact, uh, believe it or not, our own CRM application right now is four applications. Uh, why it is so? Well, uh, this just happens historically. You create application, you debug it, it uses, uses a certain framework and language, and then time passes by, and five years later, this framework is no longer in use, so you create another application using the same database. So. Uh, uh, yeah, it uses the same scheme on the same database, updates the same data. Uh, but again, you can create as many applications as, as you want uh, using the same data. Uh, it's just web applications, they can all update the same database. Uh, it's just having one application slightly more convenient than having five of them. But currently I have right now two CRM and this customer service one. Uh, when will Visa pages be available? Uh, I don't 
don't I can't answer this question. If you wish it is a feature request, uh, then please open um, support case with us and with the feature request so that uh, we know what exactly functionality you want as a wizard page. Uh, as of now, we don't have such plans. For ID, what's, what's the ID? Ah, int, big int, or good? What is the best choice? Ah, very good question. Uh, what is the best choice to have for ID? Uh, the answer would be the following. Uh, GUID is a very good choice, and if you have GUID, make sure you initialize as a se se sequential GUID, like for example here. So if I go, for example, to the customer table, oops, sorry. You can see that it's a uh, new sequential ID. Oh, uh, and uh, that is what would you would like to use uh, for your uh, initialization. And so, GUID is a good choice. Uh, the two disadvantages of GUID is that first of all they're quite big; uh, it's 16 bytes, uh, and second of all uh, they're not human readable. So, uh, if you have a table which potentially can have a lot of records. Or if you have tables who, which could potentially need to be synchronized between different databases, or if you plan to have um, uh, kind of database spread to a different service, GUID is your choice. If you have a lookup table of th three items, like for example countries or shippers or something like this, then integer is maybe better choice because first of all it's smaller and second it's human readable. So like it was like for example right now, you remember when I initialized. Uh, the case status, I initialize it to, to two because I have only three statuses, closed, open, and uh, waiting for customers right now. Uh, it's easy to remember that two is open. It's impossible to remember good. So uh, when you have, so my kind of approach is that when I have a small lookup table, and I mean lookup table, so the table which has finite number of data, uh, then uh, integer is a bit easier to operate with because you can literally see them with your eye and understand who is who. Uh, when uh, you have any table with the non-limited number of data, for example, orders which could grow indefinitely, then GUID is much better choice. Uh, if, but use a uh, new sequential ID as the uh, default value, and this is very important, because if you don't do this, then insertion of your record with GUID will be very slow. If you use it, uh, then it's much faster, like a factor of 10. Uh, if you uh, send just the schema, the ERD will still not be created. The ERD won't be created. Uh, uh, if you want uh, to picture of this particular diagram, uh, which I was showing here, I can of course uh, make this picture and attach it to. When the database data field contains but you can actually populate the diagram yourself. Uh, what's the problem? You create the schema and then you just create a new diagram and it will, Microsoft will create it for you if you have management studio. But you might not have management studio, that's true. Okay, I, I can attach pictures actually. When the database data field contains HTML, then when view it in the table view, how can you force the display to render as HTML instead of show the HTML source? Ah, very easy. You just go and change the property of the field. So, for example, in this case, my property of the field says that it uh, maximum display is default. If, and it says, it specifies where to enter HTML tags on display text. So, if I set this, for example, to, let's say, something like this, then it will show all this HTML. However, this is actually uh, maybe a small problem because if your HTML is huge, your table or record uh, will become pretty difficult to see because you can't truncate HTML. But it's easy to Can you zip a database backup? No, I can't. Um, because then I would need to delete data from it. And uh, I do not want to do this. Doing this. Uh, but again, I, I can attach the picture for the uh, diagram, or you can recreate diagram in the visual in the uh, management studio. Do we get a copy of sample database? Yes, you do. So 
or changes in the recipe designer. Usual changes you're making in the presentation. Do you lose any of those changes when you refresh? No, of course not. Uh, that was actually the last question. And it uh, looks like I don't have any more questions. And that's already right now uh, half past 10. So I think uh, it's the time to wrap it up. And um, uh, thank you all for coming here. I really hope I said something uh, which was of interest of you and maybe even something which you might not know or forgot. And that actually was the purpose. I do not expect, I taught you how to create the customer, customer service application from scratch because it's much bigger subject that you can actually cover in one hour. But uh, we will uh, have the both applications and the schema. And the schema will be CRM schema, so it will cover not just this guy, but all the CRM task as well attached and we will send you links for them. Uh, don't expect to get them literally in five minutes because I need to finish a couple of, couple of things uh, on this particular application. But tomorrow, uh, so don't be afraid if you don't get it today. Tomorrow you will get it. So you will look on those applications and kind of remember what I said. But believe me, in terms of customer service applications, this is pretty easy task. You first create all the pages and then you start cutting. And the, most of the things is cutting and changing business logic. And uh, as we saw, it's pretty easy thing to do. So thank you very much for attention and your presence here, and bye.